Hey guys, uh, Bobby here with my friend Jessica J, and we got a little video for you where we're gonna dive into a topic that uh, both Jessica and I deal with a lot because it's probably one of the most uh, popular questions we get from guys is how do you know if a girl's into you, right? How do you know if you're wasting your time, if you should pursue her? So I wanted to get Jessica on here. First off, welcome Jessica. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks for having me. Hi guys. Yeah, I wanted to get her on here because she's always got insightful stuff to say um, in, in regards to anything. And this is something I've never had her on to talk about. So I'd really love to get her impression on not only how to recognize the symbols, but then talk a little bit about how once you're recognizing them, how do you pursue it from there? So um, let's just let's just dive into the idea of you're out and you're talking to somebody, you're starting to or let's say from the guy's point of view, he's starting to, he's starting to think, wow, I, this, there might be something here, right? Mm -hmm. um, what should he be looking for? Um, the first thing in that situation I would talk about is looking at eye contact. Um, eye contact is a big thing because a lot of guys say that, oh, she's making really hard eye contact with you. But me and my girlfriends always joke around that we know we really like a guy when we can't look at him at all. Mm -hmm. So basically, to me, it's one of those things where um, I remember learning in child psych like 10 years ago at Rutgers that um, if you can maintain eye contact, with, eye contact with somebody for at least three seconds, that means you're going to be intimate with one another. So with that in mind, if she's maintaining that strong eye contact, she's trying to be intimate with you. But on the other end of the spectrum, if she can't maintain it at all, a lot of times it's because we're so nervous that we're going to feel that and that you're going to feel it too. And in a way, we don't want to give ourselves away. It's also, um, there's a lot of tension in it, right? When you're, when you're talking yeah. and then you, and then you, you connect on there and right. we and, we and, uh, you know, Rob judge, we always joke that it's like, it's almost like a game of chicken because yeah. you're like, you both realize that you both caught it and yeah. you're like, you, you want to hold it, but then you want to see if they do. And then it's oh like, who, God, who, can hold, who can hold it the longest, but. Exactly. It's a game of chicken. And one thing I always used to say is that if I break eye contact first, I know I'm going to have sex with this dude because <clears throat> I knew that I lost. And in a way I submitted and in that submission, I'm like, okay, like I let this guy have me. So now he can have me. So on the same note, but a little tangential, mm -hmm. what, where does the eye contact cross into creepy though? Because you know, we've all, <laughs> you've, you've had to experience that where it's just too right. much or like he's trying too hard to get it. It's so funny because when I first started dating coaching, I used to practice all my tips on my brother mm -hmm. and my brother called me up when I, cause I told him this thing about like eye contact, you know, three seconds. It means y'all are having an intimate connection. And he comes back and he's like, Jessica, all these girls ask me why I'm staring at them. And he's like, half of them said I was really creeping them out. So that's a great yeah. question. I think to me, it's, um, you have to, you're just, you're not going to ever look at somebody like that when you're having a conversation. It's, it's kind of like what we're doing right now. I might do this. I might do that. Um, you might think in your head a little bit to get a thought. You have to keep it natural. I say, if you can hold it for as long as three seconds, you're in control of the intimate connection. But anything more than that is going to feel creepy because I don't even look at my own family for that long. Like, I don't look at my own friends mm. for that long. When you are when you are looking longer than three seconds, in a way you are forcing yourself to have an intimate connection. And that's what feels creepy and that's what feels invasive to women. So make sure if you all are out there that you don't force it in a way that you're just like, look at me, look at me, look at me. She's looking at me. That, that's not a win. <laughs> One, two, three, I'm getting late tonight. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm good. But to me, kind of, um, yeah, if you are the one constantly breaking eye contact, I notice when a guy breaks eye contact. Mm -hmm. So if you are, it is that game of chicken where you do want to win, but you don't want to like beat her over the head with the win by holding it. Yeah, yeah, forever yeah. After. So in addition to that, what would be some other things that a guy should have is, you know, whether, whether it's noticing, listening for, um, you know, what are some other signals that, that he's going to be getting that would tell him, and we're, we're mainly at the moment, and I, and I will ask you a little bit about 
in, during the courtship period of it, if there's anything to look look out for. But in the initial yeah. meeting, right? What yeah. what um what differentiates other than eye contact, friendly conversation? Right. Um, because you know you you've probably been there where you were just having a friendly conversation with somebody, yeah. and the guy is taking it the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, so many wh- times. How um, do you differentiate, or how should he differentiate? So one thing I really like, especially when you are out at the bars or clubs, is look at how she acts around everyone else. Mm -hmm. Um, So when she likes you, she's going to have different internal feelings about you. So to me, I'm very gregarious when I'm out in public. I'm very touchy-feely with my friends, with anybody. Um, So a guy coming in would be like, oh, she's really, she must really like me. She's talking a lot, Mm -hmm. maintaining eye contact, touching me a lot. But if you see that I... I'm acting like that with everybody. That means my internal state for you is exactly the same as my internal state for everybody. But if when you come around, I kind of shut down, I can't look at you. What I'm doing, even though I'm not giving your typical touching eye contact, super happy and engaged, um, me acting different means that I have a different internal experience of you than I do everybody else. Um, again, me and my girlfriends will always joke that like, we're having fun, we're having fun. We see a hot guy, he's coming next to us. We just shut down. Like we can't fucking speak. Mm. We can't look at him. We can't even move. Um, so that's how you know when it comes to her giving you all these signs. But wait, she's giving my friend all these signs and she's actually giving all her friends all these signs. That's how you can tell. Also, if she is really reserved around her friends, maybe she's a quiet one in the group. Um, all your friends have tried talking to her. She gives one word answers, but when you come around, she opens up a little more. Yeah. So really you're looking for a change in how she acts towards you versus other people. So like an incongruency really. A in complete a way. Incongruence, like, yeah. Yeah. So if, if it's congruent with how she's talking to your friends, well then it doesn't mean anything. And yeah, that's you know, like, across the board. as a guy, we've all experienced that where you're, you're getting all those things and you turn yeah. around and you're like, well, it's, you know, you got like five, five of us walk away going, I think she wanted to bang me. You're like, no. Yeah, just- all of them are like, she wanted me, she wanted me. And I've had that happen with plenty of groups of guys um, where eventually they were like, oh, we all thought you want to fuck all of us. I'm like, that's just me. And all of them were like, no, she wanted to fuck me. No, she wanted to fuck me. And um, it was just really interesting because interesting I was like, no, I didn't want to fuck any of you. I want to yeah. fuck your friend. <laughs> so what else? What other are... Uh- verbally maybe let's say so we talked a little bit about the you know the, the subtle things the eye contact verbally what would a guy look for in terms of whether it's questions she might ask or you know the direction she'll take the conversation is there any thing that he should be looking for that you know is, is going to be a clue like okay this this is going well Right. Um, one thing I always say is that if she asks you questions at all, uh, mm-hmm. women love talking. So if she is talking and you find that she's talking a lot about herself, that's not much. But if you find that it's, oh, like, where'd you grow up? Oh, my God, me too. Um, I always say that the, oh, my God, me too, is her way of trying to say, oh, my God, look, him and I are the same. And also prove to you that, look, I should be your girlfriend. We're exactly yeah. the same. Um, so anytime you get questions, um, about who you are as a person, what kind of differentiates you from anybody else. So instead of like, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, where are you from? It's kind of like, oh my God, how do you like doing that? Like, oh my God, what was it like growing up? So as opposed to hearing, you know, minute details that could be applied across the board to everyone else, now it's like, okay, who are you, Bobby, that separates you from any other guy I'm talking to out there? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? No, totally. And it's, uh, you know, as a guy, that's generally what we tend to do too, is like, yeah. And I always say you don't know, want to fish for commonalities, but that's but but if somebody's fishing for commonalities with you, then mm. then they're projecting that interest that we're saying don't project so much. Of. But but yeah, and, I, no, yeah. So she's. Well, I mean, fishing. another thing is um one when she is asking all these questions, I mean, it goes it's said all the time. But like if she's laughing, like I had um somebody write in and be like, oh Jessica, like she asked me what I did for a living and I told her I was an accountant and she just like started laughing and I was like, I don't get it. But like, it turns out she like really had a crush on him. Um, so she just thinks everything about you is so fucking fascinating. Like you're from Michigan. Oh my God, Michigan. Like, wow. Like it's not really that well, but yeah. when she is getting, giving these elaborate reactions as well, she's trying to show you that like, Oh my God, look, we have this chemistry. I'm reacting to things you say. 
What about, so from a guy's perspective, I know that a lot of guys, when, when they start being interested, they'll start kind of finding ways to weave in things they think she'll think are cool into a conversation. Right. Um, will, will women do this? Is that that's something a guy should look at? Or, or is it more them just reacting to what he's saying? Is more, or, or do they kind of try to show them, hey, I'm a cool girl or I'm this or that? Um, so the question was like, we're looking for. So, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I know as guys, right? If a guy likes a girl, yeah, he's going to begin trying to bring things into the conversation that he thinks is impressive to her, right? right? Yeah. He might, if he's got a cool job, he's going to try to tell, talk about his job or if he's got a lot of friends or if he's traveled. Right. Saying things that he thinks she's going to find it impressive. So what I'm saying is, right. do women tend to do that too? Like if she starts trying to weave in things that are showing him, you know, and it's different things, obviously, because we're not impressed by your job or whatever. So it right. might be trying, you know, a lot of times, you know, maybe it's trying to show that you're cool about things that other girls aren't cool. You know, I'm just wondering, is that yeah, something yeah. like that, that? That's exactly what we do. And here's, here's the caveat with women. Like we we are going to, tr we're going to try to prove to you that anything that you think is cool, we think it's really fucking cool. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, yeah, every Sunday I watch football, like, oh my God, that's so cute. Like, I would love to do something like that every Sunday with my friends. Like, or maybe she'd be like, oh my God, I love football. And she doesn't fucking love football. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to show you that we support you okay. in your life. Um, in terms of trying to impress you with ours, um, we don't necessarily take that route as much okay. as we try to impress Impressive. you that we'd be a good girlfriend. Be, okay. Does that yep. make sense? Yeah. So it's not about, it's about like going back to what you said previously, it's more about how she's reacting to right. you, right? If she's reacting positive and she's being, you know, uh, supportive and wanting to, to show you that, oh yeah, I would be totally cool with that. Oh, I'm, I'm impressed. Oh, I'm by so cool with everything. Yeah. <laughs> So the way I would say it is like, I guess men try to prove that they're a cool person and women will try to prove that we're a cool partner. Okay. Totally makes sense. So let's move into then, um, you've gotten, you, you guys have exchanged numbers, maybe uh -huh. you slept together, maybe you just, you know, kissed that night or whatever. Uh -huh. Um, and now he's kind of confused. I don't know what where this is how like does she want something out of this or was it just um what should he be looking for in in that that scenario i mean that's so funny to hear you ask that from a man's point of view because for us that's exactly what we go through after we sleep together it's like oh my god like we're, that's my boyfriend like after we have sex women are basically like if we've gone out at least three times and we've had sex, we're like, that's my boyfriend. Um, and I've seen so many women try to take the reins and like trying to, okay, now we're gonna hang out all the time. Now it's gonna be like this. And I always see guys taking the, oh, let me back off. And women are like, what's going on? Um, but if you encounter a woman like that, I would say the only reason you're encountering that is because she's she doesn't want to give away that you mean as much to her as she does. And I've seen this with all my girlfriends where you've dated, you guys have called and you've had sex and now they'll be the ones to shut down because they're like, well, I don't want him to think he has me. Okay. So part of it is playing the game. Yeah. So because so in terms of what to look for. Yeah. Mentioned, so yeah, well, I guess, I guess I understand that. And I think most guys, they, I think their difficulty is when is she playing the game? When is she playing hard to get versus when am I right. getting blown off? Like, what, what right. because there's a lot of times where it, it is the opposite, at least from, yeah. from some of my clients where they, you know, I, I, I agree if, if they've slept with a girl like three times, I think yeah. that then they're pretty much, it, it's, they've kind of gotten over the hump, but yeah. if they slept with her once and it was like two weeks ago and they haven't seen her since, like, then they're like, well, what was it? So what is the signs, I guess, that they should keep pursuing it? And she's either playing a game or just legitimately busy because I get questions. I'm sure you get these kind of questions from your students where the guy w might be like, well, she's, you know, she said she, this is just a really bad week for her at work. And I'm always like, ah, 
I don't yeah, know. I, should, I don't believe I that. Be. I don't ever believe that. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I've had super busy works and you can always find, so I guess, yeah, what would be, from your point of view, what, what would be that realm um, One thing of- I would say is in the communication, say, um, you know, you, y'all slept together and maybe you texted her the next day. Maybe you didn't hear from her at all the next day and you're like, fuck, something happened. But at the same time, you didn't text her at all the next day mm-hmm. either. I know I slept with a guy I really liked one time and I was like, I don't know what to do now. And he didn't hit me up for three days. And every day that passed, I was like, I'm not hitting him up. Fuck that guy. But mm-hmm. the second he hit me up, it was like, hey, what's up? And to not come off as a thirsty ass, I was like, hey, what's up? So yeah. if she matches your communication, that's a way to know that you've still got it. But if you find yourself texting her and texting her, you've sent three texts and all you got was a, ha ha, sorry, I'm busy at work now. That's when you know that her investment isn't as much as yours. It's a literal match. Is she matching your investment in terms of communication? Because I know guys are taught to not come off as a thirsty ass either. Um, but women, I feel, are, you know, we are more scared of coming off as a thirsty ass because we're the ones who are known as being crazy, as being clingy, as wanting to lock a man down. So if you have a girl that's super terrified about that, she's going to make you take the lead. Mm-hmm. But if she's saying things like, if she says, I'm busy once, I would let her fucking have it. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe you didn't call her for three days. I and mean, that's what I did. You know, I didn't get called or texted for three days. I was like, oh, I'm kind of busy this week. But then it was like, okay, well, what are you doing Monday? She's like, okay, fine, I'm free. Um, but if it got to a point where every week is like, oh, I'm busy this week. Oh my God, my mom's in town. Now you have to wonder, yeah, is this girl really in this as much as you are? And chances are she's not. Okay, so it's about, and, and would you, so you, you give the example, right? You said, oh, I'm busy because he, wait, he made you wait or whatever. You didn't want to. Yeah. So would you give some lifeline that I'm busy it, you know, maybe another day or did you say, no, I can't, I'm busy. Like, did you, did you give some hope to keep dangling there? No, we're not even going to give hope. Um, if you, if a woman feels, especially after sex, cause we go, I feel like men go crazy before they get sex and women go crazy after they give sex. So if, you, if we didn't get what we want from you after sex, we're going to be a little butthurt. So we're going to make you work a little harder for it. Right. But, so, so go ahead. Uh, why, all right. So finish your thought. And then I want to back up because we're assuming now that they slept. Like, what, like, I also want to hear from guy met her on Tinder right. or whatever. They didn't right. have sex because that's from, from the point of, you know, where, right. where is it? Where's the differentiation there? Okay. Um, so finishing my, I don't even remember my thoughts. So let's just go with that, <laughs> which happens a lot. And fun, me and my ex-boyfriend are actually really good friends. And he hit me up. It was super on when they first got together. Um, they never had sex. They went on about like two dates. And then out of nowhere, they start going cold. And I'm reading his texts. And he was like, what are you doing this weekend? And she was like, oh, I'm busy. This, 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 this and this. I was like, oh, okay. Well, what about the next day? And he said something to her like, and she was like, well, what do you have going on? And he said something like, well, I can always make room for you. And it was from there that she started getting more and more distant. Um, if she's, again, if she's matching your communication, that's great. Um, but a lot of times we have so many options that if you don't ask us out right away, or if you aren't constantly making the, you know, making the move to come see us in person, we're going to start to lose um, feelings for you from a text because we don't really feel anything from a text. So unless your texts are being used to make her feel something from you when you're not there or to see her in person, our brains are going to train us to think that every time we open your text, we don't really feel anything from mm, it, which means we don't really feel anything from you, which means why would we, why would we want to see you? So the, the goal really is then to move things forward fast, not, forward in like a commitment term but forward in getting them back out again fast right but doing it in a way i guess where it's not because it's a balancing act you know for a guy how do i how do i try to get her out again without seeming like oh my god she's she's gonna think that i'm already treating her like she's my girlfriend you know right or without dropping your whole life we don't want you to drop your whole life you know Mm -hmm. i don't want to know that you don't have shit else going on in your life but me possibly meeting you for coffee that can't possibly be a man that I would want in my life. Yeah. Um, so bringing my poor ex-boyfriend, God, I hope he never watches this video, into the picture, if you say something to me like, I have all the time in the world for you, I can cancel anything, I'd be like, whoa, buddy, yeah. 
why? Why could you, what, what is going on in your life that I am the thing that you would cancel anything for? We haven't even met. We haven't even taken the time to get to know each other or we've met, but like, you don't really know me like that. So that to us is like stranger danger. Yeah. You must be desperate and sexually assaultive. So, so yeah. Know. So part of it is, I guess, projecting that you want to see them again. Right. Mm -hmm. But not making it so open ended, like, Oh, what day, you know, right. I really want to hang out with you. What day? Almost right. like narrowing it down of, hey, I'm gonna, I was thinking about heading here on Friday. It'd be cool if you, if you came right. that way, it's not, you're not leaving it open. Like, oh, I want to see you this week. What day is good for right. you? And then, and then in her mind, she's like, wow, like I'll, he'll give any day this week for me. Right. You know, so what okay, I yeah. say is when you say something like, what are you doing this weekend? What's your week look like? What you're doing is you're forcing me to think of like all these other things I could be doing besides you. And once you get me to think of all these other things, what you're training me to subconsciously do is think about you last. Mm -hmm. So if you say something like, hey, I got tickets or I got tickets to this festival um, for it's all, it's all weekend, um, Friday or Saturday, which one works for you? Yeah. Then she's like, oh my God, okay, I have to pick one. It gives her the freedom to not think like, oh my God, I'm feeling pressured, I have to go out on Friday. Um, she's like, oh, okay, maybe I could give up a Saturday. That's yeah. fine. But you're basically in a way, maintain control of the situation without saying like, please think of me, please. And then it also kind of lets him off the hook or her off the hook. Because if you say it that way and she really can't go out on the weekend, right now she can either going back to what we said earlier, she can either say, Oh, Friday and Saturday, I can't, but you know, I'm, I'm going to be free next week. And then she can throw right. that lifeline. But if she says I can't, um, then he's kind of, you know, he, he kind of gives him a gauge of like, okay, I gave her two days. Right. She came back with no, but didn't even suggest any other, anything else. Right. Like she right. didn't even come back and say, Oh, I would love to maybe if you're going to, you know, if you're free next week or next week's a lot better, if right. something that would give him some sort of lifeline. Right. A woman who really likes you, if you give me those two options, um, and I like you I'm going to pick one, period. But if I really can't, like, fuck, my parents are in town this weekend, but I really want to hang out. Um, I'm so sorry. Like, what's your, what's your week look like? Um, a woman who likes you is going to, like you said, make it up to you, so to speak. Cause turning down two specific options for doing something great, which is hanging out with you, that's going to make us feel like shit. So we're going to want to, you know, we're going to want to reconcile that by giving you a third option. Please take it. Um, but if she doesn't, if she's kind of just like, oh, sorry, I'm busy, then like, whatever, be too busy for her. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, one thing you know, I wanted to jump away from this because why, why I have you here, you know, one of the things you're really known for is um, kind of having the conversation that actually creates a connection. And so right. going back to what we were talking about earlier about being out there, you're talking and you sense just through the little subtle eye contact or you sense through the way she's reacting that, you know, she may be into you. She, that this isn't right. just a friendly conversation. What's the first step the guy wants to take? Um, so I always say the first step is to connect, connect on those human experiences, which we talked about earlier. Um, a woman will want to know who you are as a human being when she does like you. But if you're the one controlling that saying something instead of, what do you do for work? Oh, what, what are paper? What's a paper company like? Instead be like, Oh my God, what's it like to sit at your desk all day? Me too. Like I have butt sores after four hours. Um, what you're doing is you're, com you're connecting on a level that involves your experience mm -hmm. and your emotions. And you're starting to get the ball rolling for creating that chemistry. Um, because when you connect on your human experiences, what you're doing is you're creating these knee-jerk reactions within this girl to think, oh my God, that's just like me. And that's what chemistry is. It's a set of reactions that come out of nowhere, these internal reactions that have no rhyme or reason. So once you can talk about your personal experiences and connect them to hers, um, that's what starts the energy flowing. And that's what starts you going from connecting on both being from New Jersey and hating the winter and wanting to go somewhere warm to laughing to now flirting. So you're 
goal really is to get it to a sort of an us realm of conversation versus a this or that or me or you. Right. A, oh, I call oh, it the yeah. trusty triangle. It's okay. me plus you plus us. Like if you and I aren't talking about these three things, um, that leaves room for us to kind of have stuff put in between us. New Jersey, there's these types of trees. Oh, I've never noticed those types of trees versus um, I had to rake up all these leaves all the time. Happy you, oh my fucking God, so did I. Um, when you're talking about things that don't have to do with your personal experience or hers, you are putting these third party objects between you, which does fuck up your energy, so to speak. If you are t constantly talking about like me and you and us, um, that's what creates this energy between us. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that with guys and even been guilty of it myself, where you're in a conversation yeah. And you start talking about something you like, you know, a lot of times like travel, right? If you're yeah. talking to somebody and travel comes up and you can sit there and you can both be talking about your amazing vacations and it could be a really good conversation, but yeah. at the end of the day, there was nothing there and you end it and you're, you, it almost like a, feels like an empty, like I don't even feel anything, even though you're both laughing and sharing stories right. because you didn't go even something as subtle as, well, Oh, if you were there with me, you would have totally hated it because yes. you're this type of person. And then, and then all of a sudden it became that way. So exactly. that makes sense, totally. It's so, because it's a shared experience of now we're talking about us versus talking about like plane rides suck. Yeah, jet lag sucks. I can't relate to planes or jet lag, but I can always relate to you and your experience with it. Yeah, yep. So I know that you, like I mentioned, you're really, you know, one of your, you have a lot of um, specialties in, in what you do, but your thing that always was your, what you're known for really is this idea of speaking to spark arousal and yes. you have a program on it and also a video that kind of gives some more tips and talks about something that is called, was it the overdrive effect? Yes. Yes, it was. Um, and that's basically what I was talking about in regards to creating these knee jerk reactions that don't have any rhyme or reason, especially nowadays women go into the dating game thinking like, okay, I'm not going to be fooled by this. And I'm not going to, when he says something like that, it's bullshit. What it does is when you are getting to her on um, a physiological experience, you're shutting down her ability to think like, wait, no, this is stranger danger. You're shutting down her ability to assess like, wait, I don't like his job. He doesn't make six mm -hmm. figures. She can't, she can't stop herself from these feelings she's having in this moment with you. And that's the override effect. Awesome. So where can they go to find out more about that? Okay. Y'all can go to tsbmag.com slash spark. Cool. Yeah. So she's got a video that I, I recommend checking out if you haven't seen it because, uh, this was just the tip of the iceberg of the stuff. You know, we, we've had other conversations. And, um, it's just a very interesting angle to be creating that. And you focus what I think is really great that a lot of people don't really focus on dating coaches is this idea of the connection can lead to the attraction if it's done right, where right. a lot of people think, oh, it's got to be, you got to show them how cool or how impressive you are. Or you got to show them all your good traits. And what you're saying is that if you can connect first, it's almost, it's almost like a shortcut to this override effect, which I think is really Right. Cool. It's an absolute shortcut. Um, it's kind of like what you were saying. You can have this great conversation. We could both really be excited about it. But if y'all connected on this thing that has nothing to do with the two of you, you might feel empty later. You might not even remember them later because those are, you know, to me, those are very short term, um, what you, instant gratification. Sorry, that's my dog snoring in the background. But it's instant gratification. You're gratified by like, I experienced that too. That's really cool. But once you're gone, all I remember is that like, that experience was really cool. I'm glad that guy hyped me up on that. Um, but you want her to get hyped up on you. And that's why the, the connection is so important. Yeah, one last thing on that, which, which I also think is important to understand is that it also makes it easier to progress it, right? Because let's just say you had this conversation about travel stories right and let's say she was attracted to you and that's why she was laughing so much and you were attracted but then but then as the conversation like kind of dwindles away from that it's really hard at that point to like grab her hand or like because you're like you don't have that like back and forth vibe going right. on so right. i think by by the sooner you get it to that level that you're talking about the easier right. it is because i think that's why a lot of guys when i hear them and they're like oh we went on this date and we talked all night but then the night ended and like i know she wanted you know i know she was into me but like it just i, I couldn't figure out how to 
how to go for the kiss. And it's because that connection where you get, where it's about you and her, when that's there, it almost happens naturally. Is you know, Yeah, it kind of does the work for you. Um, because with women, if I feel connected to you, I feel comfortable with you. If I feel comfortable with you, I'm going to open myself up even more. You won't have to carry the conversation at that point. I'll be carrying it because now when, what you've done is you've gotten her to think like, oh my God, this is a really awesome guy that I can relate to. Now I have to prove to him that there's something here. Um, but that's only going to happen when I feel like you and me can relate. Like I can feel comfortable with you. Like you and me are both human beings. And the reason I'm laughing isn't because, you know, this funny thing we talked about. The reason I'm laughing is because you specifically made me laugh. So when you can no. connect on, um, that's the basis for, you know, basically controlling, I hate to say controlling her emotions and, you know, steering them to where you want to go. And she'll act accordingly once you do. Awesome. So I, Really recommend guys check out tsbbank.com forward slash spark to watch Jessica's longer video and also recommend going through her, her training because you get a totally different perspective than you get with a lot of other people that I think is really interesting. So tsbmag.com forward slash spark and thank you um, for coming on. Thanks for having me, Bobby. Yes. So it was good talking and I will see you soon. You too. See you soon. Bye guys. 